Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business. I'm super excited to see you back at the channel today. Well, right now as I record this video, it is the end of the year and I have a couple people asking me, yo, how do we do an inventory count? That's right, a physical inventory count for our QuickBooks point of sale and we don't have the scanner. We don't want the scanner, we don't have the scanner. I don't know, you might want to check out the scanner because after you do it, the method I'm about to show you uh, you're probably going to beat your head against the wall and want a scanner. <laughs> but anyway, that's besides the point. People still want to know how to do it the old-fashioned way. Uh, this is going to be the first video. Uh, I might show maybe two, maybe three different ways to do it. At least two. But anyway, today we're going to do the inventory worksheet method. And before we jump into it, I'm going to have you click in the link in the description down below to get over to our QuickBooks point of sale Facebook group. Join up there. This video request actually came from there, so you can ask all sorts of questions. We have over a thousand people using QuickBooks point of sale, answering each other's questions. Excellent community. Join up there, click the link, uh, post your questions, and I'll see you there. If you're on YouTube today, don't forget to hit subscribe so you get all the latest, greatest QuickBooks point of sale videos coming at you all the time, releasing them all the time. So here we are in QuickBooks point of sale. I'm going to head right on up to the inventory menu. We're going down to start physical inventory. If you didn't know, this is going to show us the physical inventory screen. I am on multi-store. You may not see this dialog here. This is for me to choose a store. But if you're on pro or basic, you're not going to see that. So don't worry about it. So this is the physical inventory screen. I might leave a link down below that has a more in-depth discussion of this screen but the important columns here are the expected column which is what point of sale currently thinks is in stock and then we have the counted column which is what we are going to fill in with the correct numbers don't worry folks at the end of each year everybody's numbers for whatever reason are way off or seemingly quite a bit off probably more than you think um, that can be from cashiers ringing up on the wrong item and selling the wrong stuff on the wrong item. It can be for um, uh, uh, mishaps and errors in receiving, forgetting to receive. I, I know plenty of stores that have a box of stuff that just arrived and the customers are like, oh, what is that? Oh, I want to buy that before it's even in the system. And then they just sell it and it doesn't ever get received. So that happens. Um, so the counting column is uh, what you're going to count here and then the difference column is going to show you the difference between what point of sale things you have in stock and what was actually counted. You can see that I'm in a sandbox type of point of sale. I think at some point in time I just entered 50 for a lot of different items. Uh, there we have some differences. Okay so the good old-fashioned method here is you're going to go on the print menu and we're going to go to PI Worksheet for Current Item View. I am on the current item view of all items. So if you actually wanted to, you could create a filter for department or vendor or whatever if you just wanted to do portions of your inventory like that. However, if you do that, you are going to miss out on a very important function that I'm going to discuss in a moment, which will help you keep your inventory accurate. So I'm just going to do all items. I'm going to say print PI worksheet for the current item view. Now here it is. It is a report of every single item, one through a bazillion, you know, or however many you have. I don't have a ton of items in here. Probably a hundred, okay, 154. You might have thousands of items. And if this is the method that you're going to use and the route you're going, then this is what you're going to do. And... <laughs> I'm sorry, it's a little excruciating. Uh, so we can either send that to Excel or we can print it. The general idea is that you would print this. So if I look at the preview of the printout, this is what you're gonna be printing out on paper. And so it looks like, oh, I only have two pages, but if you are, you know, if you have thousands of items or 1500 items, whatever, you are probably going to have 10 times as many pages, maybe 20 or 30 pages. So you're gonna print those out and then you're gonna divide them up among your staff and they are going to run around like a chicken with its head cut off 
and try and locate each and every one of these items. Hopefully they maybe know where it is. You could, I think this is ordered by department, hopefully, so that people can, well, maybe it's not. You might want to order this by department before you get it into the print view by just clicking on the department heading. That way it might, yeah, this is by item number. So that way it might be a little more organized by where it is in the store. But here's the problem. With this worksheet, the order it is on the worksheet is not the order it is in your store. And that's why I say you're gonna be running around like crazy because you're gonna look for number one and it might be over there. And then you're gonna look for number two and it might be over there. And then you're gonna look for number three and it might be over there. And you can either do tally marks here or you can actually just write down the number after counting. But somehow in the blank here, you are going to want to write in the number or tally. And it gets especially complicated when some of these items are in the front of your store and over on the window. And then there's some back in the back storage closet. And so you have to keep counting the same item and keep adding tally marks or keep adding together numbers. And that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm a, such a proponent of the physical inventory scanner, but with the scanner, you just go down your aisle and scan everything in the order that it's in. It doesn't matter. It adds it up later. Sorry. Had to say that. All right. So you're going to get these worksheets, go all around your store, count everything up, fill in the blanks, and close out of this. And then when everybody's done counting everything, you're going to come back to this screen and you're gonna go, uh, you're probably gonna order it by item number or whatever order it is on your sheets. Now that's backwards. And then you are going to head on down the line with your worksheet and probably a ruler so you know which line you're on. And you're gonna start entering these in. Okay, we counted 48 of those. Let me move my mouse. Uh, we counted uh, actually 36 of those uh, there was 55 of those and there was 29 of these and there was actually 49 and 50 and 103 so those are right on 50 this was 45 you know 48 so you're reading down your sheet and you're actually filling it in or it might be a two-person job where somebody's reading it off and you're just the number enterer so this is gonna tell us how far off we are on our items this is what we really counted. This is what point of sale thought and point of sale was most likely wrong because of errors. So let me just head down here. I'm going to skip a few. 50, 26, 30, 50, 48, 33, 1, uh, 60, whoops, 62, 55. Okay, so you're heading on down. Now, you might find that um, some of the products on your list, you didn't count any and they aren't even actually in your store. And so you leave it blank or you fill in a zero if you really feel like it, but you can leave them blank. And then at the end of entering in every single item, then down here on the bottom right, there is a check mark that will fill in any blank areas with zeros. This can bring your negatives back up to zero. It can also zero out stuff that you no longer have. Maybe it was lost, stolen, or broken. Uh, that's about the gist of it. If you're having a hard time finding some random item, there is a search bar up here. So you can type any type of word or the item number or what have you up here in the search bar and hit search. It'll bring up a screen with possibly several, several results and you select the result you want and hit select. It'll bring you right to the line for that item. That might help you with some miscellaneous junk that you found in some drawer somewhere. All right, so that's pretty much the gist of it. Once you fill this all in, and then you set all items not counted to zero, you're gonna see that fill in with zeros. Obviously, this is way off because I didn't fill in everything. So this is like the last thing you do. Then, you can see some little subtotals down here of how far off you were. And if you would like to, you can leave this screen by hitting save and continue. That'll just save our progress. That's not going to apply changes to inventory. That's just going to allow us to close and leave the screen. If we want to, we can investigate some item or some receiving vouchers that didn't happen. Maybe we want to enter them because we forgot. Uh, whatever you want to do there, you can then come back to the inventory menu and start physical inventory. And you're right back where you were. Progress is saved. 
and you're feeling good about it. And so now we can apply changes to inventory. This check mark, I will say that if you show up on this screen and this is already checked, it's not going to do the zero thing. This is more like a toggle. So if this was already checked when you got here, you're going to want to uncheck it and recheck it and watch the zeros fill in. There you go. We're all done there. I would now hit apply changes to inventory. I'm going to select yes and it's going to update all of my quantities. Hooray! The adjustment memo is generated. Now if I'd like to, I can either do a detailed report of every item or I can do a physical inventory differences report which will only show me the differences. I'm going to skip that right now but I think you get the idea. You can save these to a PDF or print them out if you like. I'm going to skip that. Now, I actually don't want all of those items set to zero because that kind of leaves me a lame duck here for future episodes. So I'm going to show you one last thing and that is if you screw up you can go on the inventory menu to the quantity adjustment history and I will see that there is one entry from today's date that actually says physical which means physical inventory and we can see a lot of changes were made. It was changed from 5,463 quantities to 412. Whoops! I totally screwed up. So I can come here and I can select this and I will tell you if you have over 500 items it's going to have a line for every 500 items. Uh, we only had 114 items but every 500 items will get its own line so if you have 3,000 items counted in your physical inventory it's actually going to write six lines because six times 500, right? All right, so I'm gonna go, I want to reverse the memo. If you had a whole bunch, you would reverse every single one. So now I have a physical inventory, then I have a manual reversing reverse, <laughs> which undid it, and that's completed. And now when I head back to my inventory list, oh, all my glorious 50s are back. All right, there you go, folks. That is pretty much it. If this was informative and helped you out, go ahead and hit that like button. It's a big old thumbs up. <laughs> My name's Peter with Black Rock Business. You have yourself an excellent evening and a happy new year. All right, bye.